so so welcome to our channel i have guests today two guests <laughs> dr obina and um joshua joshua okay it's going to be more conversational so um i know i'm the only female here but we'll see how it goes so i hope they don't grind me the essence of our channel just building christian singles um to have godly christian homes so if you have not subscribed to our channel and you don't know who we are we are a group of christian people singles married and we talk about how to um, build a christian home how to you know start a christian relationship and find the right partner a christian man a christian woman how to get to know each other process of courtship of knowing each other and all the way to marriage <laughs> so we're talking about gender roles so yeah. this is a topic that has come up a lot before we move on just to clarify it so, so to give the viewers and the audience a perspective so she's the married person yeah i'm the married person i'm the very single person yeah and he's a relationship person uh, so we I, have different perspectives that will come together in right the discussion so don't <laughs> no, because she's the only female so people won't look at it like exactly that. she's the married one mm -hmm. and the very single one he's the relationship i mean i'm a so, into relationship yeah. just started not so, so much yeah but just getting there just getting there but you are still singles in quotes yes yeah, yeah. no on the way no just to give the person when the audience singles in court because you're not yet married yeah. exactly but maybe in a relationship in a relationship status yeah still searching i'm still playing playing Play or praying playing P -L -A -I. P okay okay eligible yes El eligible bachelor. most eligible bachelor. <laughs> <laughs> you are hearing <laughs> eligible bachelor okay <laughs> okay without wasting too much time we'll jump right into the our topic for today and um, <laughs> we're talking about gender roles and um the place what is gender roles mm -hmm. and um how does it apply to christian singles i know people discuss a lot about it who should do what or oh, it's in different context mm -hmm. because the society thinks that um a man is supposed to do something and a woman is supposed to do um, some other stuff in the house so that there's a kind of defined gender role that happens in the society but there's a lot of disputes. Some some mm -hmm. men call them feminists when they start to protest and say, no, a woman should not do everything at home. The man should help. And maybe things about who is responsible for what in the home, right? So these are topics that bring a lot of controversy. People discuss about it. And um, so we'd like to talk about it. And what are your concepts about point, or viewpoints yeah. about this? Yeah. So, I think the genesis of this conversation is relevant because my conversation with Brogan and I came up and we thought, and I did, did discuss it with a couple of Christian singles too, and it seems like it's a very hot button issue, especially for women. And so we thought we could get our perspective on it and also more from a biblical point of view. And I'm sure we might probably argue from different angles, which is fine. And so I'll probably make we're gonna take a stab at it first, and yeah, then, yeah. You, oh, you said yeah. Like I maybe start. start. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, what, like, are, like, what are your views like, on like, it? Like, like you said, if mm -hmm. we're going to go from the biblical perspective, as you said, if there's going to be a variance or a variation in the biblical perspective, it shouldn't be much mm -hmm. this particular issue because mm -hmm. it's more like fundamental stuff. Right. If it was a secondary stuff, okay, different people might have. Maybe different takes on it, but this is so fundamental that it's almost all through the scriptures. Mm -hmm. If you start from the Garden of Eden, it's interesting how the Bible narrated it. In Genesis 1, it says God made man. I can't remember exactly, but in that context, it was as it, it was as if he was saying and he blessed them. Mm -hmm. There was no mention of the woman mm -hmm. in Genesis 1. It said he blessed them mm -hmm. before Father multiplied. Genesis 2, it now goes into detail how he actually made man. Mm -hmm. He didn't just speak, he mm -hmm. formed man. Mm -hmm. After forming man and giving him instructions, then later, he now, even the way he made woman was quite different from the way he made Adam initially. Right. From there, we move to Genesis 3 mm -hmm. and the 4. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
think there's there's been discussions on was Adam actually physically present when the serpent was interacting with Eve or was he absent? Mm -hmm. It was it's not too clear, but okay. But as it keeps going, there are some interesting parts of the scriptures that I think address this issue. Some indirectly, some directly. If we look at uh, Proverbs, I think 14, 1, where it says, the wise woman builds her house. Mm -hmm. And the foolish one will tear it down. Mm -hmm. It says nothing about the man. If you remember Ruth chapter 4, mm -hmm. when um, Obed was born to Ruth and Boaz, mm -hmm. what did the woman, women tell Naomi? She said, may Ruth, may this woman build up this house the way so, um, um, Rachel and Leah did build up the house. Now, when you look at it, were they really building themselves? They were fighting. Mm -hmm. They even brought Bill mm -hmm. and uh, Zilpah. Right. Yes. If you look at the whole, the way the Bible is speaks about women in context of relationship, family, home, it's as if whatever the man is, it is the woman that builds the home. Mm -hmm. That woman, you can't, there's no two ways to look at it. It's the woman that builds the home. Mm -hmm. The man can bring money, the man can fight, the man can bring food. It's still and who tears down the home? The Bible says it's the woman. It didn't say necessarily it's the man. If you want to be honest, if you keep looking at it. Now, that being said, so when we, if, okay, let's even go to Proverbs 31, from 10 to 31. Mm -hmm. This is 10 to 31. Mm -hmm. If you read that place, I know, yes, if we try to relate it to modern day, modern times, but no matter how you relate it, if you want to, if you want to go based on principles, we still see that even that virtuous woman is around the room. Mm -hmm. if, if you look at what that Proverbs 31, 10 to 31 talks about the man, the husband, what, where did they find it? At the gates. Mm -hmm. At the gates of the city, meaning that's where the judgment and the law, the elders stay. That's where you mm -hmm. find it. Yeah. But when you look at what, what they're talking about, the woman, even if, yes, she does business, she does this, she wakes up at night, it's around the home. If we come to the New Testament, we go to Titus, or we go to the, um, act, um, sorry, the uh, epistles, epistles of, of Paul, Paul. Yeah. Timothy. and mm -hmm. all those books, you begin to see, it says, older women teach the younger women to do what? A king. Mm -hmm. Whatever he's talking about, trying to survive, it revolves around the home. Mm -hmm. Now, how, how this plays out, you know, in day-to-day -day activities is going to differ from family to family. But the fundamental point or principle there is that the woman's let me not say who the woman's sphere of primary influence is the home. Mm -hmm. She can do other things outside the home, fine. But biblically her sphere of primary influence is at the is in the home. It's also interesting in the book of Proverbs when you read that it says the wise son does what makes a glass makes a glass mm -hmm. but the foolish son is more or less embodied to the mother. Yeah. You begin to ask yourself, ah, so if the son, if the child turns out good, is the father. Well, if the child turns out bad, is the mother. Them. But I think the, the principle in my suggestion is that is the mother that will bear the much of much of the brunt mm -hmm. if the child turns out bad. If the child turns out good, yes, principally is the father, but indirectly the mother is also there. That's where I see it. So that's just the, based on principles now on gender role. And I guess where the gender role becomes iffy is when we're looking at day-to-day -day activities. But I think where, why, it, why it's become iffy is many even believers in the professing church are not Bible students. Because at times when you hear their points of argument, it's not based on the Bible. It's based on what society says. What is some saying. of the common points of Some of the common points might be, oh, but I'm busy, I'm working. It means you don't even know fundamentally what your sphere of primary influence is. Like, and so I, if they say they are working, they are busy, what do you think? So in, in essence, what they are saying is like, in a two-parent house where both parents work. Mm -hmm. So they are saying, oh, the man works. Mm -hmm. I also work. Mm -hmm. We almost work the same hours. Mm -hmm. We come back almost the same time. Mm -hmm. So why should I be doing all this, or why should I have all these home responsibilities? But the problem is indirectly they put into the lie, the side case, the spirit of the age. Mm -hmm. Because let me break it down. If you if if you order your life based on the Bible, mm -hmm. that means there are some things that should come first, mm -hmm. in order of priority, then others second. Mm -hmm. 
but they don't do that. So what they do is they just take things as they come mm -hmm. without that order of priority. Mm -hmm. Because if they order their life based on biblical priority, what they will detect is, you know what? Maybe I should switch to part time. Mm -hmm. So that I won't be stressed out and, you know, be the whole stuff at home, especially when there are children involved and young children. Mm -hmm. So I think that is the part that at times is missing in the conversation. Because it, at that level, it's not practical. Mm -hmm. It's not only principle, it's not practical, meaning in day-to-day -day activities, how do we, I understand, so people see like, you know, the responsibilities, the fees, but if you want to tell ourselves the truth, it's greed and selfishness. I would disagree with that, but go on. Let me explain why I say so. The, what did the Bible say? It says, there's some parts in the Bible that is really challenging, it says, we will not borrow, we will learn to measure. Mm -hmm. It says, God gives us the power to get well. John mm -hmm. 8, 18. Yeah. If you stick to that, it says the, the, the lender, the, the borrower is a it's servant to the lender. lender. So if you stick to those principles, yeah. what do, at least you should tell you that do not overextend yourself financially. Mm -hmm. if, you can't, if you can't afford this size of house, mm -hmm. go for the size you can afford. If you do that, there are some things you won't put your hand into and you'll have peace of mind. Yeah. This is what I discovered. I and mean, the statistics show it. Many women are under at a, either antidepressant or stress drugs. Why? Because they are bought into the side case, the spirit of the age. They are turning women into men and men into women. If you look at what's going on in society, they are trying to uh, feminize mm -hmm. men while masculinize women. I'm not just saying this. That, if that you look is at a trend, broad. No, I'm, 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 I'm saying generally speaking. Yeah. Generally speaking. Because ask yourself this, ask yourself this question. How many male men, like role models, you can say these are men, do we have to do in our society? I guess it would depend on how you are defining no, what no, no, men. No. That, I, I, I said that on purpose. Do you know why I said that on purpose? If you're a child growing up, right, you grew up, you saw grandparents, grandfathers, you saw mm -hmm. fathers, you saw uncles. Mm -hmm. Even when you're listening to their discussions, there are some men that even they admire. They might, there's something about men. Men might disagree. But if you come and ask this person about the other person, you say, I don't like this guy. Or he's a man. That, that's how men talk. The question is, what is manhood? Okay. We're talking about gender roles, male and female. Mm -hmm. That's why I say they're trying to feminize men. Oh, show your feeling. No, I'm not saying you shouldn't show your feeling. But how do I put it? Let me, let me use this practical example in the Bible. Look at what happened. In the Garden of Eden after the fall. Mm -hmm. When God, who did God first speak to? Adam. Mm -hmm. Eve was there, the serpent was there. Who did God first speak to? Adam. Yes, Adam. And what did Adam say? Blame. Adam didn't own up. He mm -hmm. passed the blame. When he moved to the woman, he asked the woman, what did the woman do? The woman passed the blame. Now, when you look at the repercussion that came, in essence, what did God do? Indirectly, what God said, woman, it looks as if you are. Getting out of hand, you must not be subject onto the, your husband. Mm -hmm. It's not me that is saying it. I'm telling you, yeah. read it in your Bible. Yeah, and I think maybe yeah. I'll pick it up from there. Yeah. Um, so because the last point that you make, the subjection comes yes. as a result of the fall. Yes. Right. And so proud to the fall, there wasn't any idea of subjection, it was the element of complementarity. Right? There was still the I don't want to use hierarchy because people take it the wrong way, but there was still that um, order, uh, like the chain of command. Before there. the fall? Before the but it wasn't like outright subjection. What was, what did God, when God gave Eve it's, to it's, Adam? It's silent, it's, it's silent in the sense that when you go to the epistles, I think First Corinthians, what did the Paul say? It was the it woman said, that... Exactly, he said that the woman belongs to the man, the, the man belongs to Christ, the, and Christ, Christ is there. To God. Yeah. So you see, that order was there from even before the fall. It wasn't explicit. Now, because uh, that is where I usually take issues with. Because no, when no. people talk about gender roles, there is that bifurcation. It's either this or that. Yeah. No, 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 no. What, what I mean what is, mean, is no, what no, I mean no. is this, because if you look at how creation happened, mm -hmm. the creation of man, mm -hmm. I was discussing having a discussion with the lady. I'll tell you later, you were there. When I asked the lady, the lady said, no, God gave the direction to put Adam and Eve. I said, no, 
God gave that direction to Adam before the creation of the earth. To do what? To take care of the garden. Take care of the garden and don't okay. eat this and don't do this. Right. But yeah. God never repeated that command. It's not said. It's not said that you that can't that make that that's, explicit that's what, statement. No, that's yeah. that's what that's, I mean. That's not everything it that's wasn't said. Repeated. It wasn't repeated. Yes. Exactly. When I say it wasn't said, it wasn't written. It wasn't written. Yeah. Okay. Now that it wasn't written, but if you look at how God addressed it, it means that God knew that Eve knew. Certainly. Yeah. Apparently. Yeah. Now, the question is, you know, there are some things in the Bible that it's not explicitly written, but when you put different parts of the Bible together, you begin to see a picture. Why is it that in the Bible, all three, leadership, headship, responsibility is male? In the sense that when something happens, who does God look to? It's the man. Look at the four. After the four, who did God first? God already knew that it was Eve that first ate that fruit. But nothing happened when he, after he ate. So when God says that the woman should do the whole, it's given her responsibility. No, what I'm, what I'm, I, what, I think, what I'm I think we might say. probably get off track here no, a little yeah. bit. Again, I'm, I'm I want to talk about, about the, about the, the roles, idea roles. of roles. Right? Because when people talk about gender roles, they are essentially saying there are certain roles that, that people are very should play specific. In, in, in essence, in essence, let me not come, let, let me not come out clearly. In essence, no matter how you look at it, Leadership is for the man. Now, when I say leadership, I mean primary leadership. I doesn't, it doesn't mean that all oh, the woman is not going to be there. Mm-hmm. I mean, after all is said and done, let's say there's a problem with the woman. It's the responsibility of the man. Right. That's what, I, this, that's, that's what I mean by the primary head of the home. Yeah. That's what I mean by primarily. If you talk about generals, leadership is for the man. Mm-hmm. Second, now, primarily for the woman, biblically, is the home. Now, when I say the home, Again, let me clarify. It doesn't mean, oh, don't go out, don't do this, don't do... No, no, no. It means that her primary, where her attention is, primarily... Because it's something, if you know a little bit about leadership, leadership is about influence. And you said something a while back. You said the woman's sphere of influence is in the home. So are you alluding to the fact that then if the woman's sphere of influence is in the home, then she's supposed to influence people under her. That's what that's why I said that primary leader. That's why I try to explain. I say it doesn't mean that. So is because it a, I said, a delegated responsibility in terms of the sphere of influence? When, I, the primary sphere when I say influence. primary means you can do other things, but if you fail in that one, you fail. No, no, I do I get that. So but I'm when, just I, when to... I said male is leadership, it doesn't mean the man is not going to take care of it. When I say woman is taking care of it, Taking care of the woman doesn't mean the woman cannot lead. You see, you see, you see what I'm trying to say. It's just no, like this. Let, 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 let me explain it. Let's say the man. So you just hold on for a second. No, me, what is leadership to you? Yes. That what leadership you, means uh-huh. first and foremost responsibility. Meaning you're responsible for something. No, you couldn't have responsibility without leadership. No, no, that's why I see. Leadership to me means mm-hmm. you're responsible for something in the sense that you, you're responsible to chart the direction. Mm-hmm. You're responsible if something goes wrong, you're, you're help, meant to help accountable. Mm-hmm. So all these angles and aspects of leadership. Okay, so so in my leadership class, this was what okay. is the whole thing, the diamond model. So if you were a leader, um, you influence actors to come oh, into yeah. an action. Yes. Right? So yes. the major thing has to do with influence. Yes. And you are saying that for a woman, your primary sphere of influence is at the home. So it means that the woman has to influence others in the home to be able to accomplish something. Yes. So who are the actors that the woman is influencing? So you are essentially saying that the woman is the leading woman. people in the home to do something. The woman is... So I'm mean, that, that's, 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 that's why I did not want to use that word influence. Okay, because that's good. If you want to use influence, uh-huh. it influences both of them is going, both of them influence everybody around them. Yeah, the so it's a shared one. leadership yes, role. That is why I didn't want to use that word influence. Okay. Because when you use the word influence, it they intersect. Uh-huh. But when I say responsibility, it's now restricted. So influence is, is also part of the leadership. Mm-hmm. But when I, what I mean by responsibility is this. You can influence people, but that doesn't mean you are responsible for the actions. No, no, no. If if because we have influencers on social media that you follow what they do, they're not because they are kind of um using the term loosely. 
And so that was the reason that's why the, I, I go back exactly. to the whole idea of leadership uh, as the sphere of influence that as you were mentioning. The, the sphere of influence, what I mean, what that's why that's that's yeah. why that's so why that's I, why that's why I call it primary sphere. Yeah, because for me, the whole idea of bifurc- bifurcation of roles is not something I subscribe to. Um, sociologically, there are certain temperaments that women have. It's funny because I was having a conversation with a non-Christian and he doesn't like the idea of gender roles. And he, he, I came across as advocating for gender roles, right? And he pushed back and he said, you have a dinosaur thinking referring to that. I was like, okay. So, sorry to cut you short, but I have a question for you uh-huh. that you forgot, maybe you've not thought of it to respond back. You ask a person, show me your work. In, in essence, what I'm trying to say is, have what you're advocating for work. Show me the proof. For him, it has worked perfectly no, 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 well no. for his family. Don't you get what I'm saying? Show me the proof. Like in, in an the... exception does not make the proof. No, yeah. but family is different. Yeah. No, you don't get what I'm saying. Like broadly don't speaking. You get what I'm saying? Broadly speaking, there is a way that has worked. You get my point. Obviously, but, but for me, rule... for me, even uh, especially thinking about this, then I'm more inclined towards the whole idea of complementality. And Compl- complementarity is still also under still gender role. No, I'm not saying there is no gender roles, but it, the reason, the way the gender role is set up, is set up in the sense that it's like the yin yang model, right? Yeah. So there is an aspect where a woman supposed to. No, there's there's always going to be and an intersection. Not even the intersection. The, the two work together for yes. harmony. Yes. Right. So it's not as if I'm leaving these things to this person, because if you look at the yin yang model. You have an aspect of black and white, an aspect of white and black, and that's how it works in the home. So the man wouldn't come home and see my wife tired of something. Your sphere of influence is to the home. Well, you see, you're, 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 take, you're not, you're not um, taking what I'm saying in context. That's why when I started, I, yeah, I started, so that's what I want to be able to understand. What, what, I'm, trying to, what I'm trying to say is this. Mm-hmm. Let, me, let me now make it use practical examples. Mm-hmm. Something happens in the home mm-hmm. and for whatever reason, a third party gets to know. It's mm-hmm. not as if someone told a third party. Yeah. Something, can you be more specific? Let's say about, a child like, falls, falls on the way or something. Yeah, you know, yeah. And a third party, maybe grandma or you know, someone goes to go to them. Generally, who do you think they're going to ask? Because the child fell on? Something about the mother. No, something happened. Yeah, they'll ask the mother. But if that thing is very serious, then of course the dad will be the one. That, and, that, I'm trying to explain to you. And the dad that. is, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not I'm arguing the aspect of the hierarchy in the home. That is yeah. not what the gender roles conversation is about. The woman generally is more mature. Right, that is true. A man generally is more interested in things. That talks is true. Is, generally speaking, not all men. That they speak true. in terms of concepts that and is ideas. True. Generally speaking, that is true. Now, if that is true. Mm-hmm. Let's even take it based on this psychological level. If that is to be means there, it's even more for the woman to stay close to the home since she's more nurturing, especially if there are young children involved. The man can be. Yeah, I, I, I don't disagree with what you are saying. Now, Maybe you think I disagree with that. No, I don't. No, because when, when, when we're talking about gender roles, the, this is where, the way I see it. The way I see it is that even these people that are kicking back against some of the traditional roles. If you see them and ask some of them are still sane, generally speaking, they will agree with the traditional roles. I think if you explain it in a way that everybody understands, that, that's what I mean. Nobody will push back on that idea. Because because for me, where I see the problem is because because that was the reason why I, I like the idea that you mentioned that the whole idea of subjection was yes. as a result of the fall. Yeah. Right. And if we believe that Jesus Christ came to redeem us yes. from the curse of the fall then maybe there is that roadmap back to where it all had to be. And that is the idea of complementarity. No, I, I, no, I, th- I, th- I, no, I, no, I think that was the at the beginning. Remember, at the beginning, he said God was making a help me. Yeah, yeah, what was it? It was in like... Complementary. Yeah. Complementarianism. Yeah. That was called. So that, what, I, what I mean is that the four, complementarianism was before <laughs> the four. Exactly. But the four kind mm. of through some wrenching to, wrench to it, yeah. But like you said, Jesus Christ came to redeem us from the curse. Mm-hmm. So it's going back to that model. Okay? Yeah. Now, if we're going back to that complementarian model, mm-hmm. the way I see it, let's even stick with Genesis between one and two. Mm-hmm. The way I see it is, God gave the man the orders. This is what you should do. Mm-hmm. These are the boundaries. This mm-hmm. is what you should not do. This is what you should do. 
Mm-hmm. And what did God do? God brought the woman the to woman. Mm-hmm. And if you if you watch, God kept quiet. God didn't say anything between is it verse 21 to mm-hmm. me. It was Adam that began no talking up and down. Yeah. What and what I personally am learning from that is you know, I hear people say a woman needs to train his wife. Some people get a man needs to train his wife. Some people get angry at that. But don't look at it on the so, uh, surface level. Go deeper. There's there's some elements, you know, even in nonsense, there's some element of sense at times if you really watch it. I think what I can get from take from that statement is not every man. It should be the man that knows where he's going to. Of, of, of course, of course. Because I mean, if a man knows where he's going to and he's on his God given purpose, mm-hmm. if the woman falls in line, mm-hmm. I don't know if you see if you've seen this. There are very few of them I've seen, maybe one or two. Where if you enter the room, you see the husband and the wife, you're like, yes, this is working. Right. This is working. You don't you don't need any prophet to tell you know that this is working. The woman falls in her lane, the man falls in his lane, they walk. Like a team, yeah, you know? and that's that like a good so that's the thing. Work. They work yeah. like a team. So the no. individual roles that we have yes. is not in isolation. It's not yes. in isolation. It's supposed to bring us to harmony to yes. work as a team, and that yes. is what is usually missing in modern day conversation about gender roles. Yes. Right? You you talk about purpose when I proposed to my now fiance. Yeah. That was one of the questions she asked me. Is like. <laughs> what is your purpose? Uh-huh. So I'm like, okay. No, it's a good question. It is, right? Because she doesn't want to join to somebody that just is like just yeah. moving yeah. around it's like circles. something, right? Yeah. And so that is where I think the conversation has to be. We shouldn't think of gender roles in isolation. No, no. What is it supposed to be? It's supposed to bring us I, into a team as well. Sorry. And mm-hmm. I don't blame the women. Why I say I don't blame the women? This, there, there is lots of... I, 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 exactly. I can't be a hypocrite. Uh-huh. And say man is the head and not to blame on the woman. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They probably blame the primary blame is still on the man. You if you're true. a man on your God given purpose, there are some things you should not even accept mm-hmm. to start with. Mm-hmm. Because when women, you know, people, women are interesting beings. They watch, they observe, and they adapt. Let, let me give one example. Let's say in the society, mm-hmm. most men begin to go a certain way. What do you think the women will do? They will have that. Tell us if she doesn't know where she's going. No, 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 no. It doesn't matter. You, you, you are a woman. If a woman respects a man, yeah. wants to get with a man, what do you think she will do? She will have that. If a woman respects a man, let's say well, we are they, single. They, they have been stories of women stepping up when men fall well, down. Yeah. And that is where the problem is. Yeah. Because when that happens, what do you think happens? The woman loses respect for the man and right. everything goes south. Goes south. That I agree because with. Because it's unnatural. Yeah, you could say that for sure. In a sense. Yeah, that. That's why that's why when you hear me saying leadership or headship or responsibility, I believe that's the natural order God gave. You're right. Your, the man should be on his God-given purpose. Mm-hmm. I'll give let's even give practical examples. When we hear of um, this um, Mount Zion ministries. What's his name? Uh, Bamilo, yeah. Bamilo, yeah. If you hear his story, how he even got married to his wife, even his, I think, sister, elder sister, was against that relationship. But the woman was convinced that this man had a God given purpose, even though he had nothing there. Mm-hmm. And they went ahead. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because he had a vision. That is, even though he didn't have the even though he didn't have it was it. obvious that he had, he had a vision and he knew where it was going. Because this world leadership, it was clear. He had right. a clear vision. Yeah, and I don't disagree with a, a man being the leader yes. in the home. Like for me, again, back to the gender roles. When the conversation is hard, people tend to think of it in isolation. Like they don't think that me doing this has a part in the overall picture of how the home yes. is supposed to be. And once that picture is lost, then we begin to break out about. Who is supposed to do what? Who is that is why, if you notice, the way I always come at the discussion, I come at it at levels. Mm-hmm. If we don't clear this level before going now into detail, the two cases, it will fall apart. If we start with the order God set, mm-hmm. leadership, mm-hmm. if that one is fixed, okay, we know everybody agrees this one is fixed. Now, when we come into day to day, for example, domestic chores, mm-hmm. you know, money, finance, then it will be easier to. If, if you're going to compromise or give and let go, you know that it's within this parameter, within this circle. If it goes beyond the circle, move. 
that is why when these discussions come up, I like starting from this level. Yeah. Headship, leadership, just the way the Bible is set it out for us. Because mm-hmm. when the headship is right, okay, yeah. when the woman comes in now, and because the way I see it, honestly, part of the issue, you know, some people argue feminism or no feminism, feminism or no feminism. If you look at even the history of feminism, they, they, they say it, it came in waves, first wave, yeah, second wave, yeah. third wave. Mm-hmm. If you look at the first wave feminists, well, they they're, they're, against, they're against this current third wave. Oh generation. no, I'm taking a huge time for sure. Because the first wave people, what they fought for was right, give us equality, give us sorry, equal access to opportunity. Mm-hmm. But what the third wave people are fighting for is more like we want to be over men and we want equality. Of outcome. outcome. Yeah, I mean they don't see that explicitly, but that no, no. is <laughs> let, let's 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 lay it down because I think part of the problem, part of the problem is this is what I believe. Until Christ comes, there will always be this male and female tension in the genders. Mm-hmm. As Christians, as believers, I believe that tension is always quelled because we have the knowledge that God is watching, God is the invisible third party. That is what I believe. Men and male and women, uh, male and female are always in tension. They're not to complement one another, each other. Yeah, it, they're always in tension. Because for me, the whole idea of subjection, especially how people think of it, they think of it as in terms of the authoritarian. Okay, I'm subjected to him, therefore, like, kind of, you're bossing me around. No, no, remember, that is not remember we're, we're looking at the individual. Yeah, but that is not. And people see, because the whole idea of gender roles and the Tension around it is not biblical, right? The tension yes, around yes. it is more societal, yes, right? So we need to look at it from that society perspective to us when how they are thinking of it, and then we correct it with what Fine. we believe is the Fine. biblical. We, 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 we see what the society is saying. If we, let's even use this Ephesians five. Mm-hmm. Some people start from twenty one. Some people start from mm-hmm. twenty two. Whatever, from twenty to thirty three, mm-hmm. then and out. If you look at it, I want to use that as a model. What did the, what did God tell the husband? Well, it's not all that say. See, basically, you're the head. You should love your wife as Christ loved the church mm-hmm. and be willing to die for her mm-hmm. and wash her with the word mm-hmm. and all yeah. that. Mm-hmm. And it turns to the woman mm-hmm. and say reverence. Some, yeah, some, some this is say yeah. respect some, as the law, as unto the Lord. Mm-hmm. But do you know the interesting thing? Some women or even wives respect their pastors. Or reverence their pastors more than their husband. That's the new <laughs> thread of conversation that I'm seeing all over social media. No, no, no. Like because the woman, okay, no, no. Because because that's why they into their whole idea of gender roles, though, right? Yeah, that is a that misunderstanding. Is, no, no, no. And I, I don't know if it has to do with familiarity to us. Wow. No, no, what I'm trying to say. Yeah. What I'm trying to say. Is this. But will be another map. What I'm trying to say. I was listening to something upstairs, uh-huh. and I agree with what that person said. I think I've said it to you again. I said, if a young woman comes to a single lady and asks me, a couple of them have had issues in their relationship, my colleagues have, they are married now. I, oh, I often tell them, I say, see, if you cannot respect this man, no. you might love him if you cannot respect this man, whatever the situation, don't marry him. That is true. Number two, if this man tells you, jump from this building, and you're not confident in what that man is telling you, don't even marry him. Oh, that's a, in that's a, a, in a, a, I haven't no, thought about that. In essence, let, what, in I will essence, let this thing for a while. That's about trust. Yeah, in essence, that's what I mean. Yeah. You should be able to trust this person that come what may. His, 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 his intentions side. are clear. Like, if, if it's not like he's that, he's asking to do something. I can that, do it confidently. Yeah. Don't even, because they, I've, I've seen this. And it was, it's interesting you say that because I met. Um, like my friend's family yesterday, because one of his cousin was feeling so sorry when there. And that was exactly what Hanty was telling me. That if if your spouse says something to you and you know that it's wrong, but because you know her intention that she wouldn't do you harm, mm-hmm. it's something that like you are willing to do because because you know her more than the action, you know her yes. intentions, right? And it's the same thing that you said, you should be able to well and to trust somebody. Although the thing that they are committing you to, it sounds absurd, but because you trust the person, you know that it's for your good. And, and so I do agree with that. 
And until we are able to get back to the biblical roots about what God is asking us to do, we can just fight around and throw things around and be influenced by society to the point that we, we lose what the basic principles of what it, what gender really is. It, yeah. So if I'm if I'm going to um, summarize, streamline the discussion now, I'll say, what do you expect the roles of each individual in the home? Like when you're going, when you're planning to get married, what do you expect as a man? Do you expect that the woman should do everything that is related to her as a woman, like she should do all the house calls and do all the um, taking care of the children and your own role as a man is just to bring money home, food home, and chillax and relax. And, and watch TV. And watch TV. And hey, is it done? And <laughs> is the food ready? And, you know I mean, what I mean? I, I, I think so, I would probably say something that like Obina brings our efficiency by break. If the husband loves their wife, love sometimes gets in the way. If you see, like, well, it's a primary duty of the wife to take care of the home. But is she doing that to the detriment of her health? And a loving spouse will not sit back and see, well, this woman is very tired and I'm not tired. I'm able to help here and there, but I'm, well, it's her responsibility anyway. She has to be accountable to that. No, I think love constraints us to be able to act in that way. But we, if we don't have that understanding of what God is calling us to, then we will buy into that strict rules and say that whatever happens, she has to do that. I heard of a terrible story when I was in Winnipeg and it was a Nigerian couple that I don't know, but I heard it so strong and obviously if the husband is not a Christian, I would say that. Because the husband goes to Canada through mm. the woman, right? Mm. And you see, the woman will be in church and she has already prepared food and everything. The husband will come home, it's up to him to microwave it. Mm. He will call his wife, oh, yeah, come back from church, come and microwave the food for me. That is stupidity. Yeah. I mean, if you think that is what gender rules is, then you miss the point. Where is the love in it? You know? yeah. So until That's we have that extreme. Yeah, and that's how many people conceptualize what gender is. Yeah, because if she already made the food, then just microwave it. What does it? Let me. Yeah. Yeah. And some people will say because when my father was growing up, I never saw my father go to the kitchen and open the pot. Can I just like, like, can I just throw in a comment? Yeah, sure. I guess the comment is this, or the observation is this, and that is why I stress and emphasize people in positions of spiritual leadership or counsel like counselors to really help younger folks like us to, especially the women, to talk to them. Why I say the women in this context is because generally it's the man that proposes and that is left to, mm-hmm. for the, the woman to accept. accept. Yeah. Because if this man is not you know, saved, doesn't even have salvation to start with, mm-hmm. these are the kind of things you'll be experiencing down the road or down the line. Relationship. Well, they don't term that as lack of spirituality. They don't no. see that they're not born again for them. To no, no I'm, not, I'm not talking about the individual. I'm talking about objectively speaking. Mm-hmm. So you, so from what you're saying now, you're making me to understand that if a man goes all the way to that extreme, then his, his Christianity is without it. See, what I'm going to say to that is, I'm not God, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but based on what God has given us in the Bible, that exactly. is wrong. It's yeah. flat out wrong. And sometimes they, they you, you get what I'm saying because how do I put it? There's no other way to look at it. It's just flat yeah. out wrong. Then how can you justify? There's no justification. You can't say, oh, maybe the woman was being disrespectful or insubordinate. It's, there's no. You can't even fix it. There's yeah. no. It's, way to fix it's it. even going towards being mean. It's I mean, not even mean. It's, right? it's wickedness. Or <laughs> 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 that is wickedness. That's yeah, that's yeah. That's yeah. Like, that. I mean, <laughs> you're not lame. You're not. Yeah. You're not, I mean, when I heard that, you know, was, handicapped. Like, no, oh, you know, the thing, the thing for me, gender rules. The way I say it is this: if if you ask me, first of all, the man should be right. What I mean, right? The man should be heading the right direction. Right direction. Yeah. Have the right purpose. Should be the even purpose, before right? marriage, before yeah. relationship, the man should have his purpose, his direction, his vision. He's the head. It's the reason why they call him head. He should have the eyes. He should eyes be able side. to see. You should be able to hear. You should be and, and, first. And it's it's 
it's interesting because the little that I have seen, many women calls for management. They get saying they want not to be ordered around, but they want somebody who has vision to be able to this is the way we want to go. What do you think about it? Like they don't mm-hmm. they don't naturally want to be ahead. Right? Even if the person has a strong personality, yeah. they still want to kind of lay back a bit. Let and, them take and charge. Let take charge. This one and so that is the important t- point to bring up about the loss of manhood. Yes. If the man is not taking charge, it's not taking charge. Yes, and it's forced. Just, yeah, exactly. And right. sadly, part of the reason is, again, men also adapt as women adapt. Mm-hmm. And often when men adapt negatively, that affects society, society in general. In general yeah. Because what men basically do, I'm going, to, I'm going to try to please the woman, I'm going to mm-hmm. do what she likes, but that's wrong. It is very wrong. Because Under what you're essentially doing, you're even hurting the woman you said you're trying to you love. If you really love the woman, you should be the head and stand. She might not appreciate it then, but two years, three years, she'll be like, okay. Next time, when that issue comes up, she won't actually with you again. She, she already understands. Mm-hmm. The way I say it is, we, we start with the men. Mm-hmm. The men should come right first. Mm-hmm. Have the vision, have, be in the right direction. And when I say leadership for men in gender roles, it doesn't necessarily mean, oh, he has all the money. So mm-hmm. he's, the wife might even earn more than the husband. Mm-hmm. But for that family or relationship to work, the man still has to be the head. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The man has to be the head. Mm-hmm. He, he should set the tone. Mm-hmm. Practically now, let's say, vision setting. Okay, I might tell the wife, you know, we have this house now. Children are growing. In, let's say, five to 10 years, we need a bigger place. Mm-hmm. So let's start planning. Mm-hmm. Ask around to your friends or realtors, you know, you know. You see the way the thing has gone now. The man sets the vision. The woman can now even bring ideas or go mm-hmm. out to whatever. Come back together again, brainstorm. Yeah. It's like that complementary yeah. you're talking about both the vision, the well, head, the head. Yeah, but yeah, now that, that it, I do agree nowadays it's an, it's a play. The, people argue that. It should be a, a discussion. A shared goal. Let me ask yes, you, let me you ask have this. to discuss about it. Let me ask you this question. Mm-hmm. Have you seen any enterprise, any organization, any outfit where there are two leaders? Uh, most that have now have co-CEOs. No, 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 no. That is nonsense. Even in co-CEOs, there's, there's the there, of, of course. You, you should get what I'm saying. Yeah. There will be discussions, there will be dialogue, but that no, doesn't mean... No, no, no. So thing. when people talk about shared goals, it doesn't mean, not saying it, that it doesn't mean, head. yeah, what, what it means is that making other people feel part of what you that is what I'm saying. That is why I'm saying what I'm saying. Yeah, like, no, I, I don't disagree with what you're saying. I completely agree. No, I'm two, just two, elaborating. Two yeah. The man must come with and the woman must yeah. clear her eyes yeah. and choose and well. Choose well. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. this is the sad part. Again, it comes back to female nature. They want to hear sweet things. <laughs> Men want to see, you know, but women want to hear sweet things. I think it's nice. Because you think of it, why do good girls marry the bad guys? And later they start crying. That one is the topic of my father. Uh, yeah, I agree. Now, gender roles, back to gender roles. Gender roles, for, like I have been saying, the male have to be the head, the leadership and vision setting. Now, the woman, in essence, what the woman, the way men are sitting, the way I understand it, the woman will now take whatever the vision, whatever the goal, whatever, he, give it life. Yeah, I mean, if you say that way, it's difficult to argue against that form of gender. That's what I think, I see. and I think that is what I am saying to us. That's well. what I see. Because for me, it goes back to Eden, God's yes. creation before the fall, and it was supposed to be like the man was supposed to do something, but not to the detriment of the other people. Yes. Bring them here. And I mean, what what is that what is that going to be part of detriment to that person? It's no longer me. We don't well, even it, but, but that is how people conceptualize the whole idea of gender roles. That means that you are made for this. I think part of the problem is because people haven't seen films or families oh, where the gender role has work. played out very well. I told well. you in my life, I've seen, I think, maybe only two families where when you see men, you're like, yes, this is it. This is it. Yeah. <laughs> you have no two families like that. This the man it. says it. I'm, no, and everybody no, goes on no, the line. No, not that. This is a <laughs> <don't get> it. <laughs> We are now. We are all going to go south. south. No, no, there are different. There's this couple that I know. Men at the end of the service, 
when the woman comes to the camp to talk. In fact, the way the woman will start, oh, I'm coming under the authority of uh, my husband. When she starts speaking, it's as if they're almost speaking the same thing. Yeah, I mean, that is what no, this is becoming one really is. I agree with you. So Let me see. But, but, if, even the situation where the man says, let's go, and the woman doesn't yeah. even question yeah. goes, it's because the woman has tested and trusted, and trusted. and known that if he says, let's go this way, yeah, this so is the way. What, but there are different, because for yeah, me... Yeah, but this thing is very related. It depends on the situation. It depends on the scenario. It depends on... It is not situation. It's very... It's not situation. And that is why... Like the example that you gave was very... Was very... Uh, <laughs> military. It was very military. It was very military. It's that. The way you made it... Uh, let me explain. See, look. Let me oh, yeah. explain. This is the look, way let's, let's are And everybody's no, back. You. You know, See, let's explain. So if you were a leader and your followers... Trust you that you have the vision. The several calls that you chat, they will follow you. Mm-hmm. Right. But it's when they are in doubt, that's when they start. And that's, so I do that's what I'm trying to say mm-hmm. that the man needs to come right. I, I, you see, this, this same principle also applies even in the world generally. Yeah, 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 yeah. Leadership. Look, look, at, look at our current situation in the world. There's lack of leadership. Yeah, leadership has been lost in many respects. Even in the church, sadly, the older folks, some of them are dead, some of them are getting older. But there's that hope, but God is lifting, you know, raising up his people, the younger folks. It's still the same thing, leadership. Because if the woman, I'm not a woman, but from what I've heard and from what I've said, if a woman trusts you, if you say let's go here, she will no, go because no. she has she knows that you're not going to purposely say let's go and so, so essentially men are supposed to rise up to the exactly. call that God has called them yes. to be and not to think of gender roles as if um there is no gender who comes after it's afterwards. not even the yeah i mean when that those basic when those fund the foundations are right those things will fall, fall into place yeah. and so that is the reason why i always push back against the whole idea of bifurcation like people tend to think of it in isolation like oh i'm supposed to do this but it doesn't have any implication for the broader picture of yes. the whole thing that we are trying to accomplish and until we're able to harmonize that like because again i think of it as a union model until you know that oh there is well I don't like using that because you know it is kind of like something mm-hmm. you know. I get where you're coming from <laughs> that's like just putting it out there before before somebody thinks we are eating panties mm-hmm. 